What's up? In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these image move page transitions inside Webflow. We're going to have a collection list. Whenever you click on the item, it takes you to the collection page and the image scales into place of where it needs to be on the new page, regardless of which item you click. All of my ideas for these tutorials come from you, the viewers. So if you have an idea for a cool interaction that can't be done in Webflow natively, put it in the comments below and I'd love to see how we could tackle it together. So I'm going to leave the code we're going to need for this tutorial in the description of this video. Basically go ahead and copy that, head over to the page of your Webflow site that has your collection list on it, and in the project or the page settings under the closing body tag, paste in your custom code. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to need the item to be position relative. That way anything inside it just stays contained and we'll set the width and height um, on the actual item. Then we'll have a link block inside of it and that link is going to link out to the collection page and it's going to be 100% width, 100% height of its parent and most importantly a max width of none. We're also going to set the position to absolute and anchor it to the top left corner and that way we can move it around on the page. So this is the class we're actually going to need in our code. So if we copy the class of our link block and head over to our code, the first class followed by the period that says link, we'll just replace that with an actual name of our class and hit save. So now that we have that set up, we need to be able to tell this card what size does it need to grow to. And to do that, we're going to need to go over to our collection page and design uh, the final state of where we want it to be. Now from here, I'm going to have an unlinked version that I'll be able to copy. And this is this exact hero section for the collection page. I'll just go ahead and copy it, delete it from this one because we don't need it there and head back over to the home page. And then I'll paste it and move it to the top. Now, the only problem is I want this to be on the page, but I don't want to be able to, to see it and I can't set it to display none. So we're going to have to drag in a div and then we'll call this hidden wrapper. And from here, we can um, set the height to zero pixels, the overflow to hidden, and then very important, we want to set the position to fix and to cover the top. And then we'll just drag our whole section inside there. So now we can't see it, but it's definitely there on the page. So if we were to change like say the padding or the size of the image, or maybe stack the text underneath the image on different breakpoints, um, it's all, the code's always going to be able to reference this image in here, find out where it's positioned, find out its size, and then transform our current image to that size. So I'm going to copy the class of that image, that's our collection page image, and then go over to the custom code. And then the second class right here that says CMS card following the period, that's where we're going to paste this image class. So we can go ahead and save that. Um, so now if we go ahead and publish this, we should see that it's going to kind of just jump into place, but it will uh, pick out the right size. So I can click on any one of these images, it snaps into the current place, and then we're on the collection page. But I do want to make that a little bit smoother. So what we can do is grab the link and we can apply a transition. And then we want to apply this to all properties. Now how long we set this, uh, say 500 milliseconds, that's how much time the fade's going to happen between the current size as it's growing to the bigger size. So we can also set an easing to whatever we'd like. I'll set it to this outcore easing for now. So now if we go ahead and publish this and test it out, we should be able to um, preview the home page and we click on any one of these items and now it just slid into place. Um, each one of these items have their own sort of background color on the collection page that's being pulled from the CMS. So what I would like to do is actually have a div inside that collection item. And this div will be called transition. Um, and it's going to be positioned fixed to the corner. And it's going to pull the background color of whatever that collection item is. So what I can do is anytime we click on, say, the item or the link, I can create a trigger on a mouse click or tap. We'll apply this to the class. On first click, we want to do the home page transition out, which that's just going to take this transition 
and make it scale out so we have a nice page transition. You'll notice it goes on top of all our link cards, but the custom code is actually gonna add a really high Z index to whichever card we click on, so that way it'll be above the page transition. Then on the collection page, all we had to do is create some sort of on-page load to fade in all this text one after the other, so that way we have a smooth transition um, from one page to the other. So let's go ahead and publish this and test it out. And we'll go, um, we're on the home page. We can click on any one of these items. It swipes in, the text fades up, and then we can go back and swipes out. So one thing that's pretty important to mention is whatever transition time we set on this link, like say we want it to uh, grow over 500 milliseconds, we need to make sure any Webflow interaction we set is set to the same time. And then also in our custom code, um, underneath this right here, we need to make sure this 500 milliseconds is set to however long we want that duration to be. This is what makes the page stop before loading, before going to the next page. So this sort of delay, uh, we need to make sure matches our animations. And that's pretty much it. That's everything we need to do to make sure that these scale into place across different breakpoints and work seamlessly. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss another video again. And then also thank you so much to those of you who support this channel so I can produce new content for the community. I'll see you next time.